This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Be sure to check on Instagram at Dr. Scott McLean. Today's case we're going to be showing a TEM shell. And the TEM shell is an immediate temporary that is made on a guided implant. During my courses I'll show the guided surgery but here we're showing what the Nobel Clinician software will do is allow you to fabricate this TEM shell. So I'll put a request into the dental lab after I've planned my implant placement and ask them to build the TEM shell and have it sit on the adjacent teeth. So there's a number of components you can use to do this. They're all listed right here. But uh, the TEM shell comes back and this one was made by Hallmark Dental Lab. And you can see it has two wings to wrap around the adjacent teeth where the implant's been placed. So once the tooth has been extracted, we use this guided surgery to place this implant, then the temp shell is then going to be tried in place and will allow us to see where everything is going to be kind of fabricated. We need to have uh, an implant that has 35 Newton torque minimum. This one happens to have 70. It's a noble active implant. So you can see that the temp shell fits beautifully in place. But this is all fabricated prior to the patient coming in. So this day the tooth was extracted, the implant was placed, now the TEM shell is going to be fabricated. So we're using a Nobel guide to place the implant, then the TEM shell will come back in and it's an STL file, so stereolithic file that will be used to print or mill and be fabricated at your local dental lab. So, or even in your own office in the future, but you use this STL file to fabricate the TEM shell. So once the abutment's put in place, we don't put a screw in here. We want this to snap in. So this is a temporary snap abutment. And we, here we have to reduce it because it's a bit too long. It's important for the surgeon placing this abutment to make sure they're using the CC bone mill, which will, will enable this to not be bound by bone when you're trying to seat this in. But also when you're putting the temp shell on top of the abutment, we have to cut a couple of the rings off so we'll put it on an analog that's specially designed for this. And we're going to cut off a couple cylinder rings. And what you'll notice is when we cut this off, it's going to generate a little bit of uh, titanium dust. So you do want to clean this off using some chlorhexidine. So as we come back, we'll take the, the uh, temporary cylinder, place it into the implant without a screw, and we want to take an x-ray to verify that this is seating properly prior to seating the temp shell on and gluing these together. So you can see that it is seated. Uh, the CC bone mill has been used to do that. Now we'll apply some bonding adhesive and the bonding adhesive will just enable the flowable composite to come in and bond to that temp shell. We will use some flowable resin with a small tip to apply it into the temp shell. And you can feel confident to fill the temp shell in this situation because we do have three millimeters down to where the implant is so it's not going to lock down around the implant but you don't want to have it flowing out of the temp shell we just want to be able to pick up that cylinder as we place the temp shell back into position so using the two adjacent teeth this will line up the temp shell over top of the cylinder which is fully seated on the implant without a screw once this sets then we're going to kind of tug this off and since there's not a screw the whole assembly is going to come off together and then we'll be able to put some flowable to fill in the voids that we can't possibly pick up at the time of this type of uh, procedure. The patient is going to have very little pain the next day with this procedure. This is like putting a band-aid on a cut because we have the implant placed, so tooth was removed, implant placed, temp shell placed, and this acts to, in my mind, minimize the inflammation in the area because we have the whole kind of uh, cut and access to this site covered over and supported so the soft tissue supported so once we have the temp shell fabricated this would be the time when you'd add some bone grafting if you wish in this case there's no, not very much need for bone graft we have a very tiny uh, root surface that was taken out and so there's really no spot for bone graft but here you can see I'm applying some of the resin to seal off the gap from the temporary abutment to the temp shell and we want to make sure that it's not flowing too much over the cylinder itself but we'll come around the outside and then cure this 
uh, outside of the mouth. So we don't want to be doing this procedure in the mouth because it uh, A would get down around the top of the implant plus it's bloody up there right now and we just don't want to be doing that. So we want to do this outside of the mouth so we're picking up the temp shell. So you'll think well how are you going to get back into the temp shell because we can see that the screw channel is not there anymore. We actually filled the screw channel with a little bit of resin but that's where this new drill comes into kind of play. We can use this drill to kind of drill into the temp shell and through the access channel. So you'll see there's not an access here now, but I've designed this implant to be screw retained. But aha, you can see on the bottom of this analog that there's a little uh, access channel. And the access channel has been designed so that the drill will fit exactly through the base and enable us to find the screw channel of the temp shell. So it goes right through the analog into the abutment and then back through the channel of the temp shell. So don't cut the wings off before you get to this point because the wings help you to hold it, they help you to know the orientation. But we're just going to drill through the temp shell and now we have that screw channel. So it's not it's just being held in friction right now into this analog but we'll open this up a little bit with an 88KR diamond and then come in and put a screw in. So you say, well, what if the screw channel is coming out the incisal? You can put a little bit of flowable after the screw is put in place and build it back. But now the temp shell can be adapted. The wings can be cut off so we can start to do that. So we'll adjust any kind of imperfections down around the base of the abutment interface and you don't have to have this super super smooth in fact I think that there's some benefit to having a little bit of uh, you know just regular resin roughness but the lab when they made this temp shell made it polished made it perfect we actually used a trio scanner to pick this up so we're able to pick the shade and color with the intraoral scanner so there's a lot of digital workflow on this case and we usually show this during our live courses and show how this all integrates together because it's really fabulous to have this uh, digital workflow but you see we'll start to polish this down but that's how the drill goes through the analog uh, abutment and also the crown itself and so then you're able to put the screw back in the other way so it's kind of reverse architecture but a very cool thought whoever came up with this so we'll disinfect the temporary by putting in chlorhexidine and uh, come back to the mouth and you can see here I'm working uh, blindly. I'm on the other side looking at a TV. So as we put this in place and tighten it down, since the implant's at 70 Newtons, I can tighten with my hands about 10 to 15 on, on a good day after you know, working out, I guess. And we can see that, then we can check the occlusion. These were some of the first ones that I've made and the, the occlusion was very, very close. We want to have this non-functionally loaded, so we want only the bolus of food to hit this. But look at the temporary, how it's uh, supporting the tissue here. And this is really not going to bleed. There's not going to be a lot of inflammation around this. We have patients coming back saying that they really didn't feel much at all when this procedure was done because implant and temporary were all placed at the same day in a dirt digital type of workflow. We'll maintain the group function guidance in this occlusal scheme and you'll notice that we'll keep it so that it's not touching whatsoever and working and non-working and protrusion. The guided implant surgery makes it so that we can create a very ideal depth and angulation of the implant so that the temporary is going to be restored very simply and then the final restoration as well. So we get this ideal placement from depth and angulation and it's very safe and predictable for the patient. We'll let this heal for three months and then come back and start to fabricate the final restoration, but it's still so easy for the patient. We can screw on a, an abutment and then start to scan this with the intraoral scanner, so it makes it so easy for patients because they don't have to go a day with wearing a denture type of partial. And here, the healing is such that they really don't have a lot of pain. So with, with what you need here, you need to have a conical connection implant. So either a noble active, a parallel CC, or a replaced CC. Then you also will be using a uh, immediate temporary abutment and the temp shell. 
So by doing this, it makes it really simple for you. So give it a try. I think you'll really like it.